Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our worship service on this Palm Sunday as we begin our journey through Holy Week. Uh, hopefully you were able to grab a palm on your way in the door. Just a reminder, with those palms, please either leave them here after the service, or better yet, take them home and dry them so that uh, you can bring them back the week before Ash Wednesday next year, and then I will use them for the ashes for next year. So if you think you'll forget or you want me to dry them, you can leave them here. Otherwise, take them home, and we'll use them for the ashes for the following uh, Ash Wednesday. Um, there is church council this week, Monday. So uh, Monday evening is church council meeting. So please, uh, if you're part of the council or have something to bring to council, please keep that in mind. It will be at 6 p.m. downstairs. Um, for Holy Week, our worship services this week are going to be um, on Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m. This Thursday at 7 p.m. we will have worship service here. On Good Friday, if you would like the church open for prayer, just let me know. I'll have the church open, but I'm not going to open it if no one is planning on using it. So please let me know sometime before Friday if you'd like uh, me to come in and open the church up for prayer. Um, I can do that between noon and 3 on Good Friday. And then on Easter Sunday, before the service at 9.30, we're having a uh, Easter breakfast fellowship hour type thing downstairs. Um, there's a sign up in the back if you are willing to bring something for that. Please sign up. At, so that's at 9.30. Worship is at 10.30. And then the Sunday School Easter Egg Hunt is right after worship at about 11.30. So kind of keep those things in mind um, for the Holy Week as we move through Holy Week this week. Also, uh, if you are bringing food for the Lenten Food Pantry collection, um, the collection is in the back, and uh, you can still bring that this week or next week. Um, we'll get that delivered to the food pantry. Um, for our Lenten food collection. That's all the announcements that I'm aware of. Are there announcements from the gathering this morning? Today is a Holy Communion Sunday. Um, if you are joining us online, it might be a good time right now to run to your kitchen and get some bread and some wine or grape juice so you can celebrate Holy Communion with us. If you're here in the sanctuary, um, we got feedback from our young people that while they didn't mind the wine in the little cups, the grape juice in the little cups was a little bit um, interesting. Um, and so uh, after council talked about that, we said, you know, with where we're at with health at this point in time, um, we're comfortable going back to doing Holy Communion by passing the individual cups and trays through the pews. So uh, Debbie and Don are going to help me today with that. So when we do Holy Communion today, uh, we will be passing the trays of bread and the trays of wine through the pews. Uh, the wine is in the outer circles on the trays, and if you want grape juice, that's in the center circle on the trays. Um, so that's how we'll do communion um, moving forward. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries to raise up today? Then our worship service today for Palm and Passion Sunday leads us through the entirety of Holy Week. We start with uh, Palm Sunday and the celebration when Jesus enters town. We move through later in the service where we're going to read the story of Christ's crucifixion. And then, of course, we also celebrate Holy Communion, remembering the Last Supper. So this week kind of moves us through, is a, a, a foreshadowing, if you will, uh, to help us move us through and understand what happens in Holy Week. Please rise as you are able as we begin our celebration with Palm Sunday, the day everyone was excited uh, to see Christ coming into Jerusalem. Open the gates, for a humble procession enters the city 
among the lives of the Jewish poor and marginalized. Entering through the gates, Jesus comes riding on a donkey, and the crowd binds the festal procession by laying down palm branches and shouting, Hosanna. Open to us the gates of God, and together we will proclaim, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated for our opening prayer. God of humble entries, we lay down our branches on the path ahead and give thanks for this day you have created. For this is the day you have made, and we rejoice in it together. As we walk with Jesus and his followers into Jerusalem today, open the gates of our hearts that we might enter your realm with joy and thanksgiving. In the name of the one who came humbly, we pray. Amen. <coughs> Our first hymn for today is number 213. As we celebrate the coming of Christ into Jerusalem, we sing Hosanna, loud Hosanna. I invite you to wave your palm branches around, and anyone who would like to is welcome to join me in walking through the sanctuary and processing around, waving our palm branches as we sing hymn 213. After Jesus enters Jerusalem and uh, begins his, the Holy Week journey on the last day, or as he's entering, and on this last day before his crucifixion, he celebrates the Passover meal with his disciples. And when he celebrates the Passover meal, he changes that meal for all time. He says that in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, or he takes bread and he breaks it, and he takes wine and he gives it, and he gives the bread and the wine and says, this is my body, this is my blood. 
And so today we celebrate Holy Communion as we walk through this journey of Holy Week from the entry to the Last Supper to the Crucifixion. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Every time we eat and drink the body and the blood, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body and the blood of Christ is given and shed for you. We invite you, as the elements are distributed, to hold on to the elements until everyone has gotten all uh, the bread and the wine, and then we'll take Holy Communion together as a group. get one at the end. I'm good. I invite you now to take, eat, and drink the body and the blood of Christ given and shed for you.
Now may the body, the blood, and the blessing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in grace. Amen. At this time, I invite the children forward for a children's message. Good morning. So when you guys have ever attended a parade, has there ever been anything thrown at the parade? No? Yes? No? Sometimes what? Sometimes water balloons? Okay. You guys don't attend the right parades, because the parades I've attended, they always throw candy out, right? So they throw candy out, and everyone gets excited, and the procession goes through town, and everyone claps and hollers, and they're all having a good time, right? Well, at this was kind of Palm Sunday was kind of an impromptu parade. Jesus was coming to town, and people had heard about him. They'd heard that he was this wonderful healer and this brilliant teacher, and they were all excited because they thought, hey, this guy's going to come to town. He's going to heal us. He's going to take care of us. He's going to chase the Romans out of town, and we're going to have somebody on our side finally. And so they threw him a parade but they didn't have candy to throw. And so instead, they started cutting all the branches from the trees, just like we have in our hands today, and they cut them down, and they started waving them around like flags, and they put them down on the path in front of him so he wouldn't have to walk through the mud and, uh, or ride through the mud, and all of this because they were so excited that he was coming to town. Now, once he got to town and they started talking to him a little bit and learning a little bit more about him, they realized that he wasn't just going to do whatever they wanted. And that's when they started getting a little grumpy. So by the end of the week, they're pretty grumpy, and that's when they decide that they should kill Jesus. But at the beginning of the week, they're really excited. They've thrown him a big parade. And so Palm Sunday, the first half of our worship today, we just remember that big parade and we celebrate that we should welcome Jesus into our lives in that same way, with a great big parade, with a joy and excitement. Let's bow our heads and say a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for these young people. We thank you that you have come into their lives and our lives. Help us always to welcome you with joy and excitement. In Jesus Christ, amen. Thanks for coming up this morning. You're headed off to Sunday school. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us take a moment and share God's peace with one another. Peace be with everybody here in the sanctuary. God's peace be with everybody joining us online or watching the recording later in the week. At this time, we're going to collect up our prayers for the day. If you are joining us online and you have prayer concerns, you can type those into the chat or the comments. First names only, please. And if we get those in time for the service today, we'll include them today. If they come in later or you watch the recording later in the week, um, I do check it at the end of the week. So I will uh, pray for those folks at the end of the week. If you're here in the sanctuary, who and what are we praying for today? That's a good thing, right? right? Hallelujah. Okay. So we'll continue to pray for Roger for his healing, but also give thanks that things are looking like they're going in the right direction. Anything else? Yes, Debbie. Continue to pray for Pat. For Pat? Getting better, but still has some complications Okay. So still a long road ahead for her. Yep. The victims what? In Nashville. in Nashville. Oh, that's right. There was the shooting in Nashville. Okay. Yes. Also 
for Betty. Okay. So we'll raise up prayers for Betty today as well. Anything else? I'm going to put my friend uh, Heather on there, uh, the little girl who was hit by the bus. She's got a long road to recovery, so she's on there as well for the day. We'll raise up those folks as well as anybody who comes in a little bit later on in the worship service. We'll raise all of those up uh, a little bit later in the service today. Right now, we're going to take a moment to pause to pray for ourselves as we enter this holy week. O oh God, we know that our lives have missed your mark and fallen short of your call to love you and our neighbor with our whole lives. At times, we can enter into the circumstances of our lives with power over others, arrogance, and a lack of awareness of the needs of our neighbor. Forgive us for being more interested in our own achievements and our obsession with seeking the approval of others. Come and save us now. Transform us into a people of humility and righteousness, we pray. Amen. We take a moment now for silent confession, reflection, and prayer. The good news of God this day is this. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, for on this day, God has entered into our lives with love and compassion for all who surrender and lay down their life in Christ. Friends, we are loved, we are embraced, we are forgiven. Amen. Our first scripture reading for today starts Holy Week with the Palm Sunday reading as we hear Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem as told by the writer of Matthew. So St. Matthew chapter 21, we're going to start reading at the first when Jesus and the disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples ahead, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord has need of them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them, and they brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the ground, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord.
We continue our service with hymn number 216 as we remember and kind of reenact that uh, whole, all of Holy Week, but in particular right now, that triumphant procession into Jerusalem, number 216, all glory, laud, and honor. And now we come to the reading of the Passion. For the week that Jesus was in Jerusalem, from the beginning where they were cheering and excited that he came, to the end when they were calling for his crucifixion, the crowds react to the coming of God in their midst. They think, perhaps, when he comes at the beginning, that he will do exactly what they want, that he will be the quick temporary fix to their immediate problems, that he will heal them, that he will teach them, and that he will chase the Romans out of town. But God in God's wisdom sent Christ not just for one momentary time in a one momentary place, but God in God's wisdom sent Christ for all time and for all place. When the people realize that Christ is not going to be uh, their personal miracle worker, they suddenly turn on him, they shout crucify him, and they stand by while this king that they celebrated less than a week earlier is hung on a cross. And so now we read that story as we foreshadow Holy Week coming up from Matthew, the 27th chapter. We're going to start reading at verse 11. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. 
But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. And the governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowds, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and on our children. So Pilate released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of his robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among them by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put a charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, Save yourself, if you are the Son of God, come down from that cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, and he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel, let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God, let God deliver him if he wants to, for he said, I am God's Son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land 
until three o'clock in the afternoon. And at about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, he is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge and filled it with sour wine and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion and those who were with him keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had taken place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's worship service, we go from a moment of joy to a moment of sorrow, a moment where people proclaimed Christ with excitement to a moment where they shouted, crucify him, a moment of great good to a moment of great evil. Martin Luther said, that humanity is simultaneously saint and sinner. We are simultaneously capable of great good and great evil, of great joy and great despair. Today we see that laid out in stark relief in the Holy Week story. And today we remember that when Christ was crucified on that cross, Christ was crucified to redeem the sinner in us, to redeem the brokenness in us, to redeem the evil within us, so that we might indeed be covered over in Christ's righteousness and be in God's eyes saints, of the Lord. If we look at our own lives, we know the truth. If we look at our own lives, we know that we have done good and we know that we have done evil. We know we are capable of good and we know we are capable of brokenness. If we examine our own lives, we see the truth of humanity laid out and we see our need for Holy Week, our need for Christ's crucifixion, our need for the redemption that Christ gives. And in this story, we see Christ's redemption at work. Spend just a moment with me looking at the behavior of the Roman centurions. They go from a place of mocking Christ, flogging Christ, uh, beating him with a reed, uh, 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 spitting on him and crucifying him to a moment where they declare, truly 
this man was the son of God. They go from disgust to proclamation. They go from uh, evil to good. And all it takes is the earth shaking. And Christ, God, dying for them to see it. Their lives change when their world is quite literally shattered and shaken. The rocks are broken around them. And in that moment, they know Christ and they proclaim Christ. It is my prayer that this Holy Week, our lives, perhaps not literally, but figuratively, are shaken by the same story. That our lives are turned upside down. That the hard places within us are broken open. It is my prayer that in the shaking, we become even more vocal proclaimers that Christ is the Son of God. This week, I pray that God sends an earthquake into our lives, into our congregations, into our church throughout the world, so that through the earthquake, we can see the redemption. Through the earthquake, we can see that God dies on the cross for us, and that we are then no longer saint and sinner in God's eyes, but we are covered over in the righteousness of Christ. And we are made perfect, not through our own doing, but through Christ's death for us. And so this Holy Week, we enter the story. We enter the story to be shaken, to be broken, to be reformed and renewed and redeemed so that we can proclaim with integrity and honesty, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is Christ who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Our next hymn gives us time to contemplate Christ's death and what that means for us. Hymn number 218. Ah, holy Jesus.
We pray now for ourselves, for our church, for our friends and family, and for our world, that the crucified Christ might redeem us all. Jesus Christ, Messiah and Redeemer, we thank you for your life and your death for our sake. Help us and guide us so that we might be proclaimers of your goodness in a world that desperately needs to hear it. Today, we raise up before you those family and friends who are in great need. We thank you for some of the road to recovery that has already happened and we ask and beg you for healing, for courage and for strength as they continue on that road. Especially this day we pray for Roger, Pat, Betty and Heather. Lord, this week there was yet another shooting in Nashville this time, and we pray for the victims of that shooting, for the families and the friends and all who are grieving, and for the school community. We ask for your blessing. We ask for your intervention in this world that we might not continue to have these shootings and this grief over and over again in our country. Lord, we pray also for the victims of the tornadoes that hit in the Midwest and South this week. Strengthen them and those families as they rebuild. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ who redeems our life. Amen. Kindred, God is good, and God's steadfast love endures forever and ever. Because of God's enduring love, we cherish and give thanks for every good gift in our lives. Today, on this day that God has made, we come to share out of the abundance of God's love and light among us so that the world may know this boundless love that has no end. As we collect our offerings today, the plate is at the back of the sanctuary, and you can place offerings in as you leave. If you're joining us online and would like to support the ministry of this congregation, you can mail offerings to P.O. Box 165, Dale, Wisconsin, 54931. Even as those offerings make their way to this congregation, we dedicate them back to God's work through our hearts and our hands. O oh God of welcome and waving palms, as the crowd offered to you their praise and the palms on the road, so we share these gifts out of the abundance you have provided. May they be for the healing, salvation, and work of justice that you are bringing about in the world through your unending love. Amen and an amen. Our closing hymn is a benediction, a blessing for this holy week as you go on your way. Number 79, may the sending one defend you.
Please rise as you are able for our closing blessings. Friends, go forth humbly to serve the God whose love endures forever. Go forth in the name of Christ who entered Jerusalem on a lowly donkey. Go forth in the strength of Christ who suffered the cross for our sake. Know that God's love endures forever, even through death, into resurrected life. Amen.